we are having the first chat show with Rahul sir on your Chai with Entrepreneurs. Welcome to Chai with Entrepreneurs. Sir. Thank you, Gurpreet. Can we have a quick uh, intro from your side about yourself? I think um, in itself, Chai with Entrepreneurs, a great concept. Uh, uh, except that I don't like the word Chai <laughs> personally, <laughs> but due to you know reasons you all know. But you know, beer is the third largest uh, beverage in the world in terms of uh, consumption after tea. So I think tea and beer go hand in hand. And thanks to you, at least I'm having tea for a change. My background is absolutely, um, completely, I would say, contrarian to what I'm doing right now. I'm a textile engineer. Okay, I've got nothing to do with beer. I don't understand beer at all. I actually don't even like beer as much. Uh, but it's it's something that's given me life today. It's a four-letter word that I love. You know, uh, because it's kind of you know. Um, got me back on my feet. Uh, I was a professional turned entrepreneur. Till 2006, I worked for 20 years uh, in, a, in the corporate jungle. I, I had a great 9 to 5 job. I was earning a crazy salary, traveling the world, doing everything that you know a corporate player wants to do. But, but a time comes when you feel that you know, I'm, I'm about to get 40 and uh, I've not done enough. You know? uh, my father is an engineer from IIT himself. And he worked in a company for 35 years and he made a product uh, which is called cement. There's no excitement in cement, but he made it and that's what he wanted to do because he wanted to keep a healthy life, you know, kind of go into golf and that's what he does. He's a professional golfer now. And uh, so it's up to you what you want to do. But I didn't want to retire just doing what I was doing, you know. And, and somebody, I read this somewhere, I think Mark Twain, somebody had actually said this that, you know, your bigger regret is not about failure if you try something to do, is about you know, regretting that you didn't even try. So, you know, at 60, I think it'll be a little difficult to try and be an entrepreneur. At the age of 40, maybe. At the age of 20, yes, you should, because you know, have nothing to lose. At the age of 40, you're on a cusp of life, which you call the midlife for some reason. You have, you have children, you're married for a longer time. You're now kind of, you know, you don't, you don't know where to go. The crossroads are pretty. So either you live the corporate jungle or you basically just, you know, do on your own. And that's what I did. But when you come from a corporate pedigree, you basically have, I would say, a little bit of overconfidence. And what happens with overconfidence is you feel that, you know, the world's uh, a great place. And whatever you do, you'd succeed in. So to cut the long story short, I've had five failures, you know, before this has happened. Those five failures have made me far more stronger than I would have ever imagined. I went absolutely all the way till the, to the line, to the point that uh, this particular venture with, where we are sitting on, I actually put my house on the block, uh, borrowed money, lost it all before that. So I had five ventures, all of them were related to sports. That's the field I came from. Burnt a lot of money, whatever savings I had. And so I put everything on this one. If your life depends on it, you will do it. You know, it, it was that matter where, uh, so the confidence level, the overconfidence level had already gone. I had basically come to the, to the terms that, you know, all my best friends and my families are the ones who are actually supporting me. But people I knew as acquaintances due to my professional life had started to kind of, you know, sideline you that, you know, this guy is failing. Uh, and nobody, you know, even the banks don't recognize you. Now all the banks are coming back to me saying, can we, you know, give you a loan or can we, you know, be your banker and stuff. That's what it, well, that's what it did. So, you know, it's been a great, uh, I would say, now the ninth year of being an entrepreneur in which this particular avatar has been there for three years. These three years have been uh, delightful. Uh, very beautiful, you know, in their own way, but, but very happy uh, the way things have turned around. And I think um, God tests you on purpose. The first thing that I would come back to is your father is from IIT Correct. and the youth has been to Mayo College earlier. So uh, did you not try for IIT or did not work out? No, I tried for IIT. Uh, so, so what happens in, in, in Mayo, you normally don't study well. I can play squash, I can do everything, dramatics, you know, speak on the stage, extempore, you can make me stand anywhere, you know. We have patience levels of a different kind, we're beaten up, we, we can take physical, mental, all kinds of abuse. Studies is something you normally stay away from. But because my entire, you know, everybody around me is an engineer or a doctor, so I was literally, you know, kind of forced into being an engineer. Uh, you went to a corporate job. Sure. So did that make your parents happy? They were very happy. So they didn't start off being very happy because, again, my father came from a typical background of you have to work with a, a listing company. So, so we had a kind of a pact and I said, okay, I will be an engineer because that's what you start to. Beyond that, I will do what I want to do. So, I, so while I was in final year, I got two jobs. Uh, I got a job with uh, a Swiss-based company, an Indian company called Voltas, uh, which we know as, as a different, but Voltas is big in textiles at one time. And they had a Swiss plant in, in Switzerland. You had to work there for two years or three years and come back. And it was to basically make looms you know, where you make your fabric. 
great job. It's like a dream job to come out of engineering and you go to Switzerland and you work there. Obviously, my father wanted me to do that. And on the other hand, I had an opportunity to work in a garment company, a ready-made garment company, which nobody had heard of because a ready-made garment company was not existing. Uh, it was Darzi Wali It was all Darzi. So obviously, this was the India's first ready-made garment company, owned by a person called Amit Judge, uh, before time. Again, he, this company was called Stencil Apparel. They were the first ones to make shirts in India. This is in 91. Okay. And uh, this plant was set up. This man is before time. He's the one who started Barista in 95. So he's the one who's always before time. And, and this person actually said, I will only employ engineers who are going to actually put in analytics, they're going to put in thought process behind making shirts. For me, it's an assembly line shirt. My father obviously and everybody in my family kind of literally just, uh, you know, drove me mad that why would you, after engineering, become a darji? So I actually left my home in Kota in Rajasthan. I came on a bike. It's a total filmy story, but with four clothes and I lived with a friend here and, and he gave me his house for at least a month. Then his parents started thinking, why is this guy hanging around? So I started off in, in a servant quarters in Saket in 92. That's what I did. So I still go there. I take my you know wife there and my child there. So it's, it's called SQ to be a little more fashionable because servant quarters are called SQ. So in, in Saket H block, these are SQs. They were for 800 rupees a, a, a month. My salary was 1500 rupees. And that's where I, I began. This is very inspiring, yeah. you know, because I believe me, you know, the only purpose was of doing Chai with Entrepreneurs was to hear these kind of stories. You know, people don't, don't know what's the past, you know, people only know that today, you know, what's how things are. But as I said earlier, you know, it is the, you know, stepping stones are, are those things wherein you keep stepping, you keep learning and you keep probably, you know, suffer for some time. But those learnings that you get from there, they help you to build a person like what you are today. Yeah, if you don't fail, honestly, you won't be able to succeed. That, that's definitely for sure. You have to fail, you learn from it like you rightly said. Uh, the other thing about India, and this is uh, not there in the world, but in India, failure is considered a stigma. You know, so even uh, your parents don't like it, your, your peers don't like it, even the banks don't like it. You know, you failed, that means you're a non-performing asset. What do you mean non-performing asset? It's, it's a completely, it, it doesn't work. What do you mean I'm a non-performing asset? In the US, you're allowed to be a bankrupt. You do a chapter 11 filing, you're allowed. They, they actually respect you and they actually give you that honor. Yeah, he tried. I believe you know, recently what has been happening, you know, even the new startups which are coming, they have started, you know, hiring uh, start, uh, you know, entrepreneurs who have failed earlier Correct. because they know they have gone through the grind and, you know, they will work as if it's their own They company. won't fail here, yeah, probably. Yeah. So they've kind of learned in somebody else's yeah. money. Yeah. yeah, that is true. No, yeah, so I'm not saying everybody needs to fail, but it makes you stronger, no doubt. So, uh, you know, we have already got a fair idea of, you know, how your beta work was called. So, you know, uh, something, you know, like, uh, I, I'm sure, you know, many would be interested how beer happened. Okay. So, uh, uh, like, when I was in this um, particular venture of mine called Golfworks, which there's a large uh, place there, which was a partnership with an Australian guy, uh, my idea was retail. I was trying to retail golf. He came in from an FNB background, and, and we realized that the FNB, it was a big segment, so people would come and play golf, but they would come with families, they would come and... And, and one of the things that dawned on me, so I'm, I'm very, um, you know, I like uh, the healthy world, the fitness world, I came from that world. Uh, you know, my parents are extremely into uh, fitness, uh, everybody at home is. So, but one strange thing used to happen. So every time we would do a golfing event, so we would call four balls, okay, let's come and play golf. A lot of people at the last minute would not turn up. You know, citing a reason saying, you know, I'm not well, my... but every time we did a single mall launch or a cigar launch, four more people would turn up, like one with four more people. So I realized that, you know, health is your place, but what people love is alcohol. You know, the people like a free, free you know, kind of a shot. So, so, so I think people do gravitate towards it. And that time, actually, one of these days, I was sitting there and, and one person would come there every day and drink a particular beer every day. And I was very, you know, kind of, bestowed upon that, you know, why is he drinking this particular beer? And he says this beer is called Ho Garden. Mm -hmm. I actually owned the place, I didn't even know the beer name. So for me, it was like another element of so many things happening. So I said, what is so special about this beer? For me, a beer meant Kingfisher. That's it, because that's the only beer I knew. And he says, no, this is Ho Garden, it's Belgian style ale, and there's an ale and like that. So I said, how come you know so much? And you know, so he says, I was the MD of Carlsberg. So I said, oh, wow. So you know it, you know, <laughs> great. And what are you doing here? He says, I've retired. But I said, you don't look young enough, you know, uh, you know, you don't look old enough, sorry. Why have you retired? He said, no, I want to do something on my own. But here I come and have Ho Garden on the tap because the entire Gurgaon, this is the only place. So I said, oh, that's great. For a golf place to serve a beer you like, it's, a, it's an honor. But 
we got friendly and we actually in two days created a business plan and we called it the beer cafe so we did it together he was the face he was the you know person behind it i was kind of an investor like i said you know another enterprise for me and i put in the money but but in a year we only had one outlet and that didn't actually drive me a uh, one outlet in a year you know if you got something which is scalable and that's something i want to can give out as a as a takeaway if you created a concept okay that's one second is you've got a proof of the concept then you go and replicate it quickly don't wait you know then don't you know rest on your laurels ki okay bahut acha hai because the world does not you know wait for you somebody else will get a better idea and will do it quicker it's as simple as that so we fell apart i bought the brand from him started from scratch uh which is an advantage that any decision i make good or bad or ugly i am the one responsible so i don't have a partnership i am not against partnerships but it didn't work for me as a, as matter because of you know different uh, different opinions today uh so we started off again like i said so it's been exactly 3 years within a first outlet and then i had to put everything on the block so so the idea was to put everything on the block where i had to borrow money to put my house Get five outlets. I made five outlets in five months. So that's a ball. Achcha, the chakka maar dena chahiye. Road trip na nahi chahiye. Because you know it has happened. You know, there are certain decisions in my life that you know I realized that you know this is something so clear. I know this was going to work. So you know it's always good to go all out and you know do it. And sure. something that is what happened. You know. Yeah. So, so that's, that's it. it. So it's like playing cricket. Okay. You will have. You are the same cricketer. Even yeah. Sachin is the best cricketer in the world. You are playing cricket. But how do you observe your balls? If your day is not good. It's not necessary to play, you know, a six or whatever. You basically just keep batting to stay on crease. I agree. But yes, if the balls are coming at easy, the weather is good. Then आप चक्कर नहीं लगा रहे तो the problem is yours. Everything is towards you. And that is what we thought when your concept is worked. We opened five outlets on the trot. I got talent together because you know talent. That's the other you know challenge that you will as entrepreneurs you'll see. You sure. So I didn't have that issue. Uh, you know, it was very lucky that you know we quickly. Um, So anyway, well, one thing you know, I loved what you said that you know you opened five outlets in yeah. uh, five months. Yeah. So you know today, you know the kind of fast-moving world. You know it has always said you know it is not the bigger fish that eats the smaller fish; it's the faster fish that eats the you know slow fish. So you have to be. I remember you know reading an article by Mr. Bharti Mittal Sarasan, and you know. Uh, he actually 96 95 sorry you know when he was pitching for delhi circles he said that you know only reason we survived from reliance to say so was because you know they were fighting for their food we were fighting for their survival so a small yeah. player can actually move yeah. fast and do things yeah. faster and they they know ki bhai abhi aapne kuch yeah. bola hai you you are putting your own money so you don't have you got you can leave any chance oh, absolutely and and in fact uh, uh, the the funny part is uh you know like right you i said about the uh, how quickly you you know speed up or how quickly you replicate so there is this uh, person whom i really respect his name is gurbaksh chahal ji ji uh, he's now a, yeah so he is uh, he is one of the youngest millionaires india has ever had obviously he made his millions in in the us but he sold four companies by the age of 19 he was already a millionaire at the age of 20 and he's written some really fantastic yeah. books on and he came from a very humble family his parents were teachers would migrate to the us so but there's one very good you know kind of a i would say a line that he's written which is really cool because a lot of people said what you're doing anybody can do <laughs> nothing great about it so so he wrote something uh, and and it's very well written he says any business model can be mimicked okay any business model can be mimicked any algorithm can be rewritten okay it's fine any any business plan you can copy but the speed of execution you can't and that that actually makes you uh, you know uh, stand out and and that is what we challenge everybody so a lot of people have tried this and would try and, and obviously there is a huge market we keep saying this is my competitive advantage like you rightly said for us it is survival it's not about getting better than you it's always getting better than ourselves so that's what we do every day so our entire team only works on how can we better ourselves one thing that i would you know uh, would want to uh, say highlight was you know you mentioned something about you know uh, mortgaging your house and you know i read in economic sure. times also that point of time and been knowing that how big a role does one money play in uh, you know a startup and secondly how much uh, you know it played a role in your uh, entire game so there are two kinds of uh, money okay uh, money is the same color but there are two kinds of money and i'll tell you why because a lot of people come to me and a lot of people say you know what you're from this field you understand this field here's my son and he wants to open a bar so i said okay now what can i do so he said i said what's the business plan said, no 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 business plan he wants to open a bar so i said then i won't be able to help him i can help him if he has a business plan if he's thinking it 
does his life depend on it no 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 he just wants to be busy and i want him out of my house so i said then you got the wrong person to you know kind of you know i won't be able to help you i'll just bless you and that's it beyond that i can't do anything <laughs> but you know but he says yeah i don't have a problem i'm he's ready to lose money because i am ready to lose money i said you know what there is something called what you say happens also yeah. you know if you write this book called the secret you know it says whatever you say uh it goes back and comes back you're transmitting uh, aura and positive you know so you are yes. positive right now i'll get your energy for sure if you believe in that it, i do believe in that so agar aapne socha ye hai ki mere ko to bas mere ko bacche ko wo karna hai to wo aapka business chalega hi nahi nahi chalega so that is one type of money okay which which people use so when you say do entrepreneurs need money yes they need money so this is one money which i don't think is a good money to take the other money is which is hard earned if you've got that or you borrowed it and you know kind of done it or you know or like for example i have vc money i protect the money as much as mine so there are two kinds again your vc money you can flounder but i'm floundering my own company why would i do that for me it is better to be a 1000 crore ipo a month or two months or three months down the line rather than trying to you know basically just take in all the, yeah so so it depends it depends like i'm saying you need capital no doubt you need capital uh when you you know take a step back from the entire good corporate life where secured money is there you you know people sal- gaddi ko salam karte hain when you come out and then the same people you know the nazar but nazariya badal jata hai isme i think aap sabko bardasht kar lete ho only one person you know you need to be you know beside you is your spouse sure, because sure. you need their support you can't go back and you know she says ya he says ki yaar matlab you know nahi badal lo agar wo roz char bari bol diya agle din aap office track pe aa jaoge uh, i would uh, want to know something about vinita ji and you know where how did uh, you know was it an arranged marriage or a love marriage and then you know about uh, how has she been the support so her support has been uh, pretty uncanny from a point that she was my boss <laughs> <laughs> So this is uh, she still is she still she always is she always so, so i married into my own office uh, you know where i used to work so this was a us based company called list clebon in new york she's an indian girl but you know so she's working in this us based company and i was hired by this company uh, to look after their textiles and uh, she was heading the department there at that time for her it was you know who is this guy who just come in who is absolutely crazy you know uh, she's much elder than me so her whole objective of her life was that why is this guy here so she actually went up to the her boss the you know the country head at that time saying we want this boy out of this office because he's all over the place he's just calling his girlfriends he's talking to them he's just all over the place you know he's just not focusing but as things happened within a year you know we were engaged <laughs> <laughs> so so it was an office marriage and um, uh you know she's not worked since 2000 now so it's been 15 years she's not uh, working uh, obviously takes care of a hard, large house and you know my parents my, my 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 children so the whole story goes on but but a support came in uh, to start with it was uh, extremely i would say uh, pretty outraged why would you leave a job especially a crazy salary a crazy amount of work and you're doing all that you want and i obviously explained the entrepreneur part which obviously didn't go through because sorry, you know sorry, sorry. like what do you mean can you remember we confused over you know what you were trying to explain and, and, and so my parents have been in the service uh, oh, my grandparents i know about my grandfather is an ias officer so the entire ecosystem around us is people who only served okay we've always been uh, employees or service providers we've never been nobody's ever done business i'm the first one in the entire here and there who's actually even in, attempted to she came from an army background which is even more you know It's i would good. say regimented This is how life works. You get up, you sleep, you get up, you sleep. There is nothing called risk. Risk could be only if you go only, to war. Yeah. Okay? So, but, but that kind of a lifestyle. So it was quite, quite unnerving. But as things happened, if you have a real spouse that you really, you know, uh, you know, basically, I would say if you have compatibility in your spouse, I think she or he would see through it. And then the the protection, uh, you know, and probably I would say holding the hand. And and going through that started happening, and it happens till date because there are bad days, yes, yes, you know. There, there and I think if you do not have this spouse, so I would say okay. if you're not married, then your parents play a good role. Uh-huh. If you're married, yes, your spouse plays. But if your if your children are, you know, my son's going to go to college in two years, he's playing a bigger role on me now. So I'm saying it it changes, it because, changes, you know, it changes, it changes. Age we change our. I I I agree, I agree. But but that is what it is. If you've got a nucleus family, I've realized that it's far more supportive. uh because uh, they understand it uh, you know very 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 deep, very, very very basically with that little nucleus that you live in